Hi everyone, welcome back to Kristen's Epic Adventures. Today, we're gonna to be talking about all the great things that you can find in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. So if you enjoy D&D and RPG content just like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when our new videos are posted. Welcome back everyone. Today, we're gonna to talk about why I recommend Xanathar's Guide to Everything. I think this is a great book to pick up for both players and dungeon masters. Now, maybe you've just started with the core rule books, which is completely fine. You never have to get anything else. In fact, with the free basic rules online, you don't even ever have to get the core rule books. But if you're looking for something to add a little more options to your game and some more info, this is a great one to pick up. And I just wanna kind of share with you some of the things that are in this book that I think make it a really great investment. Now it was published in November of 2017, so it's been out for almost three years now. And I think it's still just as reliable of a resource as it was when it first came out. Now here's some of the reasons. The best thing I think about it, and this would be from a player's standpoint, is it has 31 new subclasses available for your classes to expand on the player's handbook, right? It has three more barbarian paths, three more bard colleges, two more cleric domains, two more druid circles, three more fighter archetypes, three more monk traditions, two more paladin oaths, three ranger archetypes, four rogue archetypes, three sorcerer origins, two new warlock patrons, and one more wizard arcane tradition. So there are a really lot of player options in here if you wanna go beyond what's in the player's handbook for your character. Now make sure you check with your dungeon master that he allows these options that are in here. Um, and I believe a lot of times, like if you're playing an Adventurers League somewhere, I think Adventurers League rules are player's handbook plus one other book of your choice that you can draw um, player options out of. So I would think that would be possible too, but double check with your dungeon master. Um, it also has, which I think is great for players, backstory tables. Now I'm not just talking about your background. Your background is you know, something that you pick out of the player's handbook where it kind of gives you a few more abilities, maybe some more equipment, maybe some money, things like that. But most people also come up with a complete backstory for their character. Where did they come from? What's their history? Why are they here in this moment on this adventure? And if you, don't want to try to come up with that just fully creative on your own. There are tons of tables in this book where you could just pick something from the table or you can literally roll dice and get a random backstory. It has things like whether or not you knew your parents, whether or not your parents are still alive, whether how many siblings you have, you know, why if and for each class, like why you chose to become a monk, why you chose to become a fighter. And once you do all these and put it all together, it actually kind of like creates a backstory for you. Maybe you then can fill in a little hole, some holes, some creative holes here and there if you want to, but you don't have to. I think that's a really neat thing about this book. And I think I'm gonna try that with my next character and actually roll random for everything on the tables and see what kind of backstory it gives me. I might actually just make one for fun and I'll put it in the comments down below so that you guys can see what kind of backstory I came up with. Um, okay, what else is in here? A lot of really great tools for dungeon masters as well. There is a whole chapter, I don't know if it's a whole chapter, but there's a quite a bit of information in here on both simple and complex traps, like designing them from scratch. You know, what triggers them? What happens? How much damage does it do? What do they look like? which not only do I think would be really great for dungeon masters, but how about a rogue character who's really becoming an expert at setting traps? You know, maybe you're going onto a dungeon dell with your party and the rogue wants to actually set up traps behind you guys so that if anybody tries sneaking up on you, or when you go to like take a rest, a long rest for the evening, he wants to set up some traps just in case somebody comes after you in the middle of the night. I thought that was one of the thoughts that I instantly had too, is not only is that good for DMs, but what about the party rogue that wants to become a trap expert? I thought that was neat. Um, 
It also lists all the different things that you can do with the toolkits that are in the player's handbook. The player's handbook will give you, you know, th these toolkits, like the cartographer's tools, the brewer's supplies, this and that, and it'll tell you what items come in there. But then it's kind of just left up to your imagination what you kind of want to do with those tools or what you want to use them for. And I don't know about you, but I get kind of stumped sometimes about like, oh, I may have a, you know, a dwarf that loves to drink and he's got brewer's tools and he can make some beer, but what else am I going to do with that stuff? There are some awesome ideas in Xanathar's guide on all the different stuff you can do with all the toolkits and supplies. And this isn't all of them, but just to give you an idea. And it comes up with the, um, the different DC roles that you would have to come up with and accomplish to achieve these things. Now, these are just an example. Most of the tools, it gave three to four different things that you can do with them. And I just jotted down one to let you know about. Um, things like if you have the alchemist supplies and are proficient with them, you can try on a roll of a DC 10 to identify a poison. With brewer's supplies, I'm assuming all these two also, do you not only have to have the supply, but you have to be proficient in them. So let's just assume that. Um, the brewer's supplies, also a DC 10 to detect a poison in a drink. That's kind of interesting. Carpenter's tools. If you have carpenter's tools and you're proficient in them, on a DC 15, you can try to find the weak point in a wooden wall. That's neat. Um, cartographer's tools, and some of these are easy things like DC 10, some are a whole harder DC 15, and they did give some really hard DC 20 ones like this one for cartographer's tools, which is map making, and if you're proficient in them, DC 20 to fill in the missing part of a map. That's really neat to have like to provide your characters with a map that's kind of missing some of it and see if one of your characters that has the cartographer's tools can actually make that roll and fill in the missing part of the map. Uh, you've got Mason's tools, DC 15 to find the weak point in a stone wall. Pretty helpful. Um, both the stone wall and the wooden wall one, I would think they would also, that would be also really good to try to like take down a bridge or something if it's made out of stone or made out of wood. Find the weak spot. Um, Smith's tools, DC 15 to repair a suit of armor. That's good, especially if you're wearing some and it gets damaged in battle. Uh, Tinker's tools, DC 15 to repair an item in half the normal time. That's pretty handy too. And there are more in here and there are like, like I said, three or four different options for all, each set of tools or supplies. And these are just some things that when I was reading them, I was like, oh, I never would have thought that I could have done that with those tools. That's really cool. So I think not only is that good for um, dungeon masters, but good for players as well on the player side. Another thing that's in Xanathar's is additional downtime activities. Now, I don't know if your group uses downtime activities. Um, mine did the group that we were playing in person until we had to take a little bit of a hiatus with everything going on in the world. We always use downtime activities, which I really like a lot. I'm going to do a separate video on downtime activities and what those are, but there are additional downtime activities in Xanathar's that are not in the player's handbook, such as, uh, buying and selling a magic item, carousing, which allows you to make some contacts, Gambling and pit fighting, which lets you earn some money, provided you're successful. Um, with gambling, you can actually lose money. And religious service, in which you can you do to earn a favor. And that can either be like maybe a favor from the local priest at the temple or even a favor from a god, um, depending on how successful you are at completing that religious service. I thought it was really cool in here as well, on those downtime activities, there are complication tables. What these are is a table where it states that 10% of the time while doing these activities, you might trigger a complication. So what I do is have the players roll like the percentage dice and if they get a one through 10, yes, there was a complication and then you can roll on the complication table to see what happened. It's kind of like a little negative thing, not anything super bad or anything, but kind of like a little negative thing that happened to come about from, that they triggered doing their downtime activity. There are also tons of encounter tables in here for dungeon masters. 
based on the environment you're in, like additional forest encounters, arctic encounters, swamp encounters, things like that. And there's even a whole bunch of brand new magic items and spells in here. So I think this is a great addition to your D&D library. I highly recommend it for both dungeon masters and players. I think you get a lot of um, enjoyment out of this book, especially if you're looking for some those additional player options. I know when I'm building a new character, I'll go through the player's handbook and stuff, and I'll probably have decided what race and what class I want to be, but then I'll be like, hmm, let me go check Xanathars and see what kind of sub races, uh, subclasses they have in there because there might be something really cool. <laughs> so anyway, let me know what you guys thought. Do you have this book? Do you use it a lot? Are you going to get it now? I think it's a great one. Um, make sure if you found this content helpful that you go ahead and hit that like button for us, please. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm and it helps more friends find us. And again, if you found this content helpful and you really enjoy D&D &D content like this and even other RPG content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you know when the new videos are coming up. Thanks, guys. Bye.